motion, we will move uh, immediately to a condolence motion. It is with deep regret that I inform the Senate of the death on the 26th of February 2022 of the Honourable Moses Henry Moss Cass, a former minister and member of the House of Representatives for the Division of Maribyrnong, Victoria, from 1969 to 1983. I call on the leader of the government in this. Oh, sorry, the Attorney General, uh, Senator Cash. I seek leave to move a motion relating to the death of former minister and member of the House of Representatives, the Honourable Moss Cass. There being no objection, leave is granted. Senator Cash. Thank you, and I move that the Senate expresses its deep sadness at the death on the 26th of February 2022 of the Honourable Moses Henry. Moss Cass, former Minister for the Environment and Conservation and Minister for Media and former member for Maribyrnong, places on record its admiration and appreciation for his service to the parliament and the nation and tenders its deep sympathy to his family in their bereavement. Mr President, today we honour the Honourable Moses Henry Moss Cass, otherwise known to his loved ones and friends as Moss. He was the federal member for Maribyrnong from 1969 to 1983 and, of note, was Australia's first environment minister. Moss lived a long and dedicated life to improving the world around him and preserving and protecting its natural environment. As a minister in the Whitlam government, Moss is remembered for his immense contributions to Australian public life and the selfless approach he took towards public service. Moss Cass was born on the 18th of February 1927 in Narragin, in my home state of Western Australia. He was the eldest of three sons of Ben and Esther Cass. His father was a GP and Moss and his brothers all pursued careers in medicine. Moss studied medicine at the University of Sydney and in 1955 married Melbourne-born Shirley Shulman, who was instrumental in exposing him to a world of free thinkers and stirred his discussions on progressive causes. Through the 1950s and the 1960s, Moss worked as a registrar at hospitals in Sydney, in London, and in Melbourne. It was in London that Moss undertook work at Guy's Hospital, developing open heart surgery techniques. Importantly, we acknowledge his work as a research fellow at Melbourne's Royal Children's Hospital, where he conducted research into the use of a heart lung machine for open heart surgery. Mr. President, Moss actually built the first heart lung machine in Australia. Moss brought his expertise in medicine to the Labor Party state and federal health policy committees and from 1964 to 1969 served as the director of the Trades Union Clinic and Research Centre. A man of profound intellect, Moss was deeply, thought deeply about the issues. He took to advancing a number of progressive causes traversing health, media and environmental policy. Upon his election to parliament as the member for Maribyrnong in 1969, Moss advocated for the decriminalisation of homosexuality and marijuana and the legalisation of abortion. Moss was, as you would expect, entwined with health policy during his tenure in the parliament. It was following the election of the Whitlam government in 1972 that Moss was appointed as Australia's first Minister for the Environment and Conservation. He made this role his own and was instrumental in proposing and securing the Environment Protection Impact of Proposals Act 1974, mandating the use of environmental impact statements for federal government decisions. He initiated the influential public inquiries that preceded the end of sand mining on Fraser's Island, curtailing the Ranger uranium mine in Kakadu and government protection of the Great Barrier Reef. 
Moss also enabled new grassroots environmental organisations through the doubling of federal government grants to these groups. He later became Minister for Media in the Whitlam government. His work in issuing experimental radio licences is widely regarded as leading to the thriving community radio sector we have today. During his time in this parliament, Moss was known as an effective politician, with a reputation for listening and a desire to relentlessly pursue reform where he felt it was necessary. Following his departure from the parliament, Moss maintained a keen interest in the Labor Party and all those who were agents for change, from bra party branch members to environmentalists. Moss was a serious thought leader and a man who had vision of the type of Australia he sought to shape, and he pursued that vision untiringly. Today, let us all be inspired by the contributions Dr Moss Cass made to public life and his reformist approach towards the significant challenges of his time. And on behalf of the Australian Government and the Australian Senate, I extend our sincerest condolences to Moss's wife Shirley and the loved ones he leaves behind. Senator Wong. Thank you, uh, Mr President. I rise on behalf of the opposition, on behalf of the Labor Party, to express our condolences following the passing of one of our own, the Honourable Dr Moses Henry Cass, known as Moss Cass, former member of the House and minister in the Whitlam government at the age of 95. And I start by conveying the opposition and the Australian Labor Party's deepest condolences to his family and friends. Dr Moss Cass was the member for Maribyrnong in Melbourne from 1969 to 1983 and was a minister in the Whitlam government from 72 to 75, serving in the environment and media portfolios. Along with Doug McClelland, Bill Hayden and Paul Keating, he was the last of that group of Whitlam government ministers still with us. And he deserves to be remembered. Um, last survive, I should say he was the last surviving of the Whitlam government ministers. Dr Kaz deserves to be remembered as one of, the, one of the great figures of our movement, and his influence at a time of great change was profound. He not only led policy development as a minister, but he also advanced the case for the reform of significant issues of social concern, including multiculturalism, e education, uh, state aid, reform of social policy, including on drugs, abortion and homosexuality, media reform, health reform, asylum seekers and many more. Moss Cass's contribution wasn't only to the F Federal Parliamentary Labor Party, but to our broader cause, particularly through the, his work as a doctor and to the trade union movement. And his commitment to the cause of labor was, was absolute and stayed with him all of his life. Uh, as I begin this speech, I reflect on my own personal engagement with Dr Cass, and I was, because I was the beneficiary of some extensive correspondence from him. Uh, and he wrote to me uh, over the last couple of years principally to provide his thoughts on media policy. Uh, and uh, my office replied on my behalf uh, and engaged in a, quite a lot of email correspondence. He also referred me to the book Moss Cass and the Greening of the Australian Labor Party, which is available from the Parliamentary Library. This extensively covers Dr Cass's career from his role as Environment Minister and Media Minister to the many other causes he championed. It's very clear from the book and from other uh, reporting, Moss Cass was well ahead of his time. He was ahead of his time on environmental protection. He was ahead of his time on medical and social reform. Uh, and many of the issues that Dr Cass grappled with remain significant matters of debate in Australian politics today. One of those is the media. Uh, and Dr Cass expressed to, to me his concerns regarding the health of the Australian democracy. Uh, given what he regarded as biased media coverage, distortion of facts, and the impact of free speech as a licence for hate speech. Uh, however, we didn't have many dis any discussions because he told me at the age of 94 he was too deaf to follow a telephone conversation, too unstable on his feet and nursing a couple of cancers, so he couldn't travel far from home. Uh, but he was happy to correspond with writing, in writing, and what was clear from the written exchange was just how active his mind remained and just how passionate he remained about political causes and the cause of the Australian Labor Party. 
Moss Cass was born in Western Australia, the son of Jewish Russian migrants, on the 18th of February 1927. His father was a doctor, and this was the career that he and his three brothers would pursue. He, pursued, he first pursued great innovation before turning his talents to delivering quality and holistic health care to working people and developing health policy. After marrying his wife Shirley, a Melbournian, in 1955, they moved to London where his work developing open heart surgery techniques uh, equipped him with sufficient skills so that when he returned to Australia, as my colleague Senator Cash has said, he built Australia's first heart lung machine. Quite an extraordinary person. Uh, he then was recruited to helm a new community health care centre in the western suburbs of Melbourne in Footscray. The Trade Union Clinic and Research Centre was established by the Meat Workers Union to deliver free treatment and promote preventative health care to workers. It was well ahead of its time. Uh, and his work there provides a window for Dr Cass's focus on broader issues of social inequality. So the meat workers obviously had a direct interest uh, in uh, uh, health, the delivery of health care. They're an occupation that came with a multitude of perils, sharp knives and blades, heavy lifting, variable extremes of temperatures, uh, risk of disease. And the clinic became an overwhelming success. Although it wasn't established and operated without resistance, particularly from insurers contesting workers' compensation claims. A key component of its work was also research to treat, investigate and eradicate. By undertaking proper investigation and diagnosis and deploying a range of treatments, uh, the clinic was able to see many more workers return to work and to health sooner. Involvement with the Health Policy Committee of the ALP went hand in glove with Dr Cass's expertise. And when it came to health policy, this was a formative time in Australian public policy. The Whitlam government took, first took Medibank, the forerunner of Medicare, to an election in 1969. And whilst Dr Cass had differing views about how these objectives might be achieved, he was a central voice in the debates that led to its development and implementation. He was part of a generation of, of parliamentarians who delivered one of the most substantial social policy reforms in Australian history. And when the Fraser government worked to dismantle Medibank after 1975, as opposition health spokesperson, he became a key defender. Involvement in the trade union clinic had another benefit. It connected Moscast with the left wing of the Victorian trade union movement and the ALP. In addition to the involvement already mentioned in its health policy forum, he held a seat on the Victorian State Executive at a turbulent time in the Victorian branch. There seemed to be quite a few of those, uh, which sought to recover from the split, which had probably its greatest impact there. He obtained support for pre-selection pre in the seat of Maribyrnong and won the election in 1969. If you look at his first speech, it's really quite unusual. Uh, both for the Times but also for a man, he devoted most of his first speech to the subject of abortion law reform. Uh, his experience as a doctor informed his position but also his sense of justice, and he consistently sought reform, including by moving legislation in, conjuncted, in conjunction with other like-minded members across the parliament. And before, his time, before the Times suited it, he was also amongst those who advanced what was then described as homosexual law reform, working in conjunction with former Liberal Prime Minister John Gorton, Don Chip and Andrew Peacock. Of course, he was also a minister in the Whitlam government. He was Australia's first minister uh, for environment and conservation, and he was instrumental in proposing and securing the Environmental Protection Impact Proposals Act 1974. This laid the groundwork for the ending of sand mining on Fraser Island and, the, and for protection of the Great Barrier Reef. As Minister for Media, subsequently he engaged with causes that he would continue to advance in his post-parliamentary life, particularly the power, power of media proprietors, and he was instrumental in the establishment of community broadcasting. So my last correspondence with Moss Cass was in September last year. I wrote to thank him for his correspondence to me, for his continuing engagement in politics and public policy, for furnishing ideas as for how he saw our nation ad advancement, his ideas about how we could work towards a better future. I told him that whilst I knew of him by virtue of the correspondence uh, he uh, engaged in with me, 
that I'd learned a great deal more about his intellectual contribution to our party. And I noted then, as I do now, that the core, many of the causes that he had been championing more than half a century ago were still battles being fought and finally won by progressives at the current time. Noting, for example, that my same state of South Australia only recently fully decriminalised abortion. And I expressed my hope that my card would find him in good health, but alas, we now know he would only be with us for a few more months. Uh, sadly, he and his wife both required an increased level of care and had to move out of their home in Carlton, and I regret that I wasn't able to take up his offer to visit him in Melbourne. But I am eternally grateful that I had the opportunity to personally express to him my gratitude. Moss Cass was a giant of the Labor movement, and he has done so much to benefit so many people, and more importantly, to benefit the nation. Moss Cass set a standard and leaves a legacy that few can profess to have emulated. So I close again by expressing the opposition's condolences following his passing and conveying our deeper sympathies to his family and his friends. Senator McKim. Thank you, President. On behalf of the Australian Greens, I express our deepest collective condolences to the family and friends of Moss Cass. I never had the pleasure of meeting Moss Cass, but a great number of my fellow Greens did, and they've relayed to me nothing but admiration for a remarkable man. Moss was a great many things. A doctor, a medical scientist, a parliamentarian, a photographer, a father, and a pioneer. And he was also a voice for those who needed a voice and a voice for the things that didn't have a voice. And in each of his endeavours throughout his long life, he was always collaborating with others, looking to create a better humanity and a world where people are at peace with each other and in connection with nature. Before entering parliament, Moss was a medical scientist. He built Australia's first heart-lung machine. While working as a register in London, he helped develop, op helped develop open heart surgery. He used his experience as a doctor from the very start of his parliamentary career. His maiden speech is extraordinary. Instead of the usual story of self or grand pronouncements about the state of the world, he got straight to business. The entire speech was devoted to advocating for the legalisation of abortion. This included his own admission of criminality for having helped women terminate their pregnancies. If Moss is perhaps less well known than other parliamentarians who achieved lesser feats than him, then the telling is right there in his first speech, because it was not about him. It was about getting things done and get things done, he did. While serving as Australia's first Minister for the Environment and Conservation, he established Kakadu National Park. He established the National Parks and Wildlife Service and established the process for environmental impact statements that saved Fraser Island from sand mining and restrained uranium mining in Kakadu. Later, as Minister for Media, Moss proposed the establishment of a National Press Council. In scenes that would not be unfamiliar today, Rupert Murdoch turned the full force of his media empire onto Moss and, in fact, onto the entire Whitlam government. But Moss stood his ground, and although the Whitlam government did not survive, Moss's cause did, and in 1976 the Australian Press Council was established. Moss continued to work on progressive causes after his time in Parliament, particularly those which sought to build alliances. He did so in a way that always sought to foster the next generation. He, would, he didn't seek to big note himself or use his undoubted status to wield influence amongst fellow activists. He was humble, 
and he was generous and he was always about the collective and always about the many, many causes he was a champion of. Someone who did know Moss well was Dr Bob Brown, former senator and former leader of the Australian Greens. I spoke to Bob earlier today and he asked me to place this on the record from him in regards to Moss Cass. Moss, said Bob, along with Tom Uren, worked hard to try and save Lake Pedder after the Whitlam government was elected in 1972. Later on, Moss was made Minister for the Environment and Prime Minister Gough Whitlam offered $8 million to Tasmanian Labor Premier Eric Rees for a moratorium on flooding Lake Pedder. But Rees, to the cheers of the Tasmanian House of Assembly, said he'd have none of it. Lake Pedder is still there, 50 metres underwater, awaiting restoration. Moss was a very intelligent gentleman who was to the left of the ALP in wanting social justice and environmental protection. He worked tirelessly to get the World Heritage Convention signed by Australia, which became crucial to saving the Franklin River. I remember Moss very fondly indeed. Those are the words of former Senator Bob Brown. Moss's son, Dan, who has been a Green staffer in the past, wrote of his dad recently that he made it into Cabinet because of his science of hope. That radical honesty wins votes and that power only matters if you do something bold. What great and principal legacies those are to leave the rest of humanity. To Dan and to Moss's wife Shirley and his daughter Naomi, I convey the deepest condolences of the Australian Greens. Vale Moscas. In adding my personal condolence to the family, I'll ask all senators to rise and join me in a moment's silence to signify their assent to the motion. I thank all senators. The motion is carried.